Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. Put on your rain boots, grab your umbrellas, because there is going to be a storm. That's right, we are talking about Storm today, specifically Budget Storm. But before we actually break the deck down, go over to Flipside Gaming and use promo code GIANTMONSTERGAMES to get 10% off your online purchase. Yes, this includes everything including comics, board games, and other stuff, not just Magic related products. So what exactly is Storm? Well, Storm is actually a keyword in Magic the Gathering. We're running two cards that have it, we're running Grape Shot and Empty the Warns. Empty the Warns is actually in the sideboard, but I'll, I'll get to that more of that in a second. Grape Shot, on the other hand, we are running in the main deck, and both these cards have Storm. Storm is, whenever you cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for those spells. So what you're trying to do is play a whole bunch of spells before you actually play either of these two cards, and then you're going to copy it a whole bunch of times, and ideally with Grape Shot, you're going to copy it, say, 19 times and do 20 damage to your opponent. This is kind of the objective with it. Empty the Warns, on the other hand, if we're playing against a certain deck, we'll bring Empty Warns in, and then we'll create a whole bunch of goblins and then swinging with a whole bunch of goblins either the turn after or if we can give them haste which this deck doesn't do it but some decks give them haste and they'll swing in so this is the objective with storm is to play a whole bunch of spells before you play either one of these spells so grape shot is the main card we're doing with it grape shot is actually running in the main deck because we are actually going to be trying and just doing direct damage to our opponent's face to win the game this is the main objective as you might guess well how are we going to go around playing 19 spells in one turn that seems absolutely crazy well, we have a bunch of ways of doing it. Now, the first thing I need to point on this deck is we have two creatures that are extremely relevant. We have Baral, Chief of Compliance, and Goblin Electromancer. They are literally doing the exact same thing for us. They are making it so instants and sorceries cost one less. So we can actually play a bunch of cards for less mana, which is what we're going to be needing to do if we're going to be playing 19 spells in one turn. What are we going to be making them cost less with? Well, we have Metamorphose, Desperate Ritual, and Pyretic Ritual. All three of these cards are doing basically the same thing. So, Desperate Ritual and Pyretic Ritual are almost identical. They are literally pay two mana, so pay a red and a colorless, get three red mana. So when we have Baral or Goblin Electromancer in play, these actually cost one red and get us three red in return. So we're actually gonna be getting a bunch of value off of this by getting a bunch of extra mana, which is super important. Metamorphos, on the other hand, if we have Baral or Goblin Electromancer in play, literally costs one red, because we don't have a way of producing green, costs one red to get two mana, and we get a draw card. So Metamorphos is really good in this deck, and you can probably see the synergy with this card, because it basically says, play this card, draw a new card, and then play another card, because it's not actually costing anything to play this card, so it's going to be adding one to our storm count, which is the number of spells we need to actually play before we actually play one of our storm cards. So these are what these cards are doing. They're creating extra mana for for us, and if we have Electromancer or Brawl in play, we actually get additional value with additional mana off of these cards. So this is how we're actually going to be generating a bunch of mana to hopefully go off. Now generating mana is one half of the combo, but we also have Ideas Unbound and Pieces of the Puzzle, which are going to be allowing us to draw cards. Now unfortunately, Ideas Unbound can't be made cheaper by Baral or Electromancer, but it does allow us to draw three cards, and hopefully we're going to play this on the turn we're going off. If we don't manage to go off and don't actually manage to kill our opponent when we go off, then Ideas Unbound Bound is going to make us discard three cards at the end of the turn, which is probably going to kill us, so keep that in mind. Ideally, we're going to go off, we're going to kill our opponent before we actually need to discard any of these cards. Pieces to the Puzzle, on the other hand, is actually really good for just digging up cards. So Pieces of the Puzzle allows us to reveal the top five cards of our library, pick two instants or sorcery cards from among them, put them in the hand, and put the rest into our graveyard. So this card is going to become very relevant down the road, but for right now, we can choose which two spells we actually want to keep, because we, when we're going off especially, we need to actually be getting the correct card. So this is actually really good in this deck. Now these aren't the only card to draw slash filtering cards we have, we also have Tormenting Voice and Opt. Both both these cards are just kind of replacing themselves once we play them. They're allowing us to dig deeper, find more stuff, and just get more spells onto the stack, or in, in, in front of our Storm spell, I should say. So Tormenting Voice also has an additional bonus, because once we start comboing off, as soon as we draw into a land, it tends to be a dead card. Tormenting Voice allows us to discard that land and hopefully getting better cards, so it is a quite good piece later on once we actually start going off. Opt, on the other hand, allows us to scry, then draw, so it is actually pretty good at finding cards and getting rid of cards we don't want, so if we see a land, we can just put it on the bottom, so Opt has a lot of really good uses. Also, it's only one mana, so it's very cheap, and it's also cheap in real life because it was just recently reprinted into Modern, so fantastic. Now, the deck, you might be saying, okay, so we're just gonna be 
drawing cards, playing mana, playing mana, drawing cards. Well, no. We do have a bunch of safety nets because the deck can't rely solely on drawing both of these two things in equal parts. We do have safety nets, the first one being Pyromancer's Ascension. So Pyromancer's Ascension is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell with the same name as a card in your graveyard, you may put a quest counter on Pyromancer's Ascension. Then the second half of the card says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, while Pyromancer Ascension has two or more quest counters on it, you may copy that spell and you may choose new targets. So this becomes extremely relevant if we can get two counters onto this, which Pieces of the Puzzle, fun, 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 is going to be helping us get that done, because with Pieces of the Puzzle, if we have a Pyromancer's Ascension, we can actually strategically choose what to throw into the graveyard, because we may actually want to try and get two counters onto Pyromancer's Ascension, because it means stuff like Metamorphos now just creates mana, and then we play it again, which creates additional mana and draws us additional cards. Also, with all the other mana creating cards, we just get additional three mana, but the, probably the most relevant one in this deck, and this is probably a budget, just budget benefit thing, is Tormenting Void the additional cost is to discard a card, which means if we have a Pyromancer's Incension, we literally just get to draw an additional two cards. So, Tormenting Voice, if we play it while well, we have two counters on Pyromancer's Incension, literally reads, discard a card to pay the cost of the card, draw two cards, and then we get to play it again and draw an additional two cards. So, we don't just have Pyromancer's Incension. Pyromancer's Incension is not necessarily key to going off, but it definitely helps. If we can get into play and get two counters on it, it'll allow us to basically go off no matter what. But we do have an additional backup additional safety net, and that is Past in Flames. Now, Past in Flames is each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback until end of turn. The flashback is equal to its mana cost, which means as we play cards into our graveyard, once we play a Past in Flames, all of the cards in our graveyard become basically into our hand again. We can keep playing them and just go off even farther, even faster. So when we play Past in Flames, this is a really cool thing. If we've played, say, nine spells, then we play a Past in Flames. Then we play a Grape Shot. Grape Shot goes to our graveyard. We can then play Grape Shot again. So we can actually have less spells we need to play for our Storm Count if we're going to play Grape Shot two or three times. So this is something to keep in mind. Past in Flames also works really well with stuff like Desperate Ritual because, again, it's in our graveyard. It's going to be doing really good stuff. Past in Flames also works really good with Ideas Unbound because, again, it's in our graveyard. We can just use it to draw more cards. And then, again, as I said, Grape Shot, play it again out of our graveyard and do even more Storm damage. So the last thing we do have in the main deck, though, is some lands. We have seven islands, seven mountains, and four four Shivan Reefs. The mana base needs to be quite light on this one because we do not want to be drawing into additional lands once we start comboing off. They become the bane of our existence and we need to get rid of them at all costs. And that is the entire main deck, but if you're going to be taking this out to an FNM, you're going to want a sideboard. So let's talk about our sideboard right now. We have Empty the Warns and Gutter Snipe. So this gives us a, a different win condition. If we're playing against a type of control deck or if we're playing against a deck that's going to maybe Surgical Extraction or Grape Shot, we're going to want additional ways of winning. So we have Empty the Warns, which is going to be creating a whole bunch of goblins because it puts two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens into play every single time we play it. So if we've played two spells before this card, we're going to be creating six goblins, which is fantastic. So usually if you can play it for even like eight or ten goblins, you're going to be winning the game really quickly because your opponent is going to need board wipes in order to actually kill you. And then gutter snipe just deals passive damage to opponent because you don't need to target it. So it's whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, which we have a ton of them in the deck, gutter snipe deals two damage to each opponent. So it doesn't need to target your opponent, so if your opponent has a Ley Lines in play, bam, 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 you're not even gonna have to worry about it, you're gonna be dealing damage to their face. Speaking of Ley Lines, if they do play Ley Lines or something else, we do have Echoing Truth and Repeal. Both of these cards are just bouncing target non-land permanent to your opponent's hand, so we can use this for a whole bunch of different things. So, again, Ley Lines of Sanctity being the number one thing that we may want to bounce, so we can bounce it to our opponent's hand. The nice thing about Repeal is it also allows us to draw cards, so if we're playing against something that is not high mana cost that we're gonna need to bounce, Repeal does a really good job, where Echoing Truth, on the other hand, just does a good job as well. Echoing Truth is also really good against other aggro decks, so we can bounce a permanent and all other permanents with the same name as it. So I'm looking at a bunch of token decks out there that we can just bounce a bunch of stuff. The last couple cards we have on the sideboard is Lightning Bolt and Dispel. Dispel, if we're going up against a control matchup, we can use this usually to prevent our opponent from countering the things that matter to us. And Lightning Bolt is usually brought in against aggro matchups because burn decks tend to outrace us a little bit, so we need to have a little bit of removal specifically for their low-end creatures. Also, we can just use it to close out the game if we can only get our storm count to like a medium level not like a 
kill your opponent level, so it is a good backup spell as well. And that is the entire deck, but a budget deck, specifically a budget storm deck, would not be complete without an upgrade section, so let's talk about some of the stuff you'd be upgrading. So Scalding Tarn, Spire Bluff Canal, Steam Vents, and Flooded Strand tend to be the kind of lands you see in a non-budget version of this deck. Again, most modern decks are running the Fetch Shock combo, which is really powerful, and in Storm specifically, you're going to see a bunch of Fetch lands because you don't want to be drawing into lands once you combo off. Most likely you're going to see an entire playset of Scalding Tarn, so four go fetch a mountain or an island, so in this case we're going to probably be getting a Steam Vent, but you're also going to see probably three Flooded Strands or other fetch blue slash red, usually blue, cards that are going to be fetching up lands because it is just going to thin out the number of lands in your deck, so once you start comboing off, it gets even better because you're not going to be drawing into them. As I said before, you don't want to be drawing into your lands once you start going off in this deck. So these are very common cards you're going to see in a non-budget version of Storm. The next card we're going to see is Gifts Ungiven. So this is actually one of the best pieces for Storm if you're going to be upgrading because it allows you to, at instant speed, search through your library for four cards with different names, reveal them to your opponent, your opponent chooses two of those cards, puts them into your graveyard, and then you get to keep the other two cards. So 99% of the time you're going to be fetching up Metamorphose, Desperate Ritual, Pyretic Ritual, and then Past in Flames. Usually you want to be playing Gifts Ungiven when you already have a Past in Flames in hand because your opponent's 90% of the time going to be throwing Past in Flames and Metamorphose into your graveyard. Playing Gifts Ungiven, get a bunch of extra mana, play Past in Flames, play out the rest of your deck, you explode and you go off. So Gifts Ungiven, running is a four of in your main deck if you're playing a non-budget version of this deck is a really good idea. The next card you should definitely put in the deck if you are upgrading this deck is Remand. So Remand not only gives us counter magic against our opponent if they're going to try and foil our plans, but Remand can actually counter Grape Shot. So the big thing about Storm, and I don't know if I've mentioned this, I may have already mentioned it, is whenever you play a card with Storm, it creates all of the copies before the spell actually resolves. So even if your opponent counters the spell, all of the copies still get put onto the stack. This is super duper relevant because we can play our Grape Shot, create however many copies we want, and then remand the first one we played, which is the actual card, putting the card back into our hand, and then playing Grape Shot again. Which is why remand is so good in a Storm deck, because we only need to get our Storm count to like 10 before we play Grape Shot, remand Grape Shot, and then we get to kill our opponent. Which is substantially easier than trying to get our Storm count to 19 before we actually play Grape Shot. And the last two cards in the upgrade section is Sleight of Hand and Serum Visions. They are just a little bit better versions of filtering. I would recommend running them because, again, they're just a little bit better. I mean, Sleight of Hand allows you to look at the top two cards, choose one to put in your hand, and put the other on the bottom of your library. So you get to choose between two cards. Serum Visions allows you to draw a card, which is okay, but you get to scry two, which is better technically than Opt, because 90% of the time we actually don't really need to play Opt at its instant speed, but Opt is cheaper right now, so that's why I went with Opt rather than Serum Visions. And that is the entire deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Giant Monster Games if you're not already. And until next time, my name's Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to game like a giant monster. This video was made possible by all the people over on Patreon. Thank you again for supporting, and if you want to join the awesome crew over on Patreon, go click on the link in this video or underneath in the description below.